the Babylonians could be forgiven for thinking that the child is a machine. We know better. We've had four and five thousand years of insight um, that they lacked. And we still teach kids the way that the Babylonians did. Some teachers take the initiative. Some teachers are passionate about the subject, passionate about teaching, and very imaginative about how they teach. And they take the initiative to teach really well. And kids love them. They love learning from them. More importantly, they love the material that they learn. And they feel like they've discovered, they feel like they own the material for themselves. Because really good teaching is a process of guiding people's discovery, which the Babylonians didn't do. So the Bab Babylonians would force you to learn things in parrot fashion. They'd hit you really hard with sticks if you got things wrong. They'd humiliate you in front of the class if you got things wrong. And they would force you to compete against your uh, classmates for the teacher's approval, which is a kind of a substitute for the parent's love. And so they'd create very anxious, hostile, competitive people uh, who didn't learn things uh, as well as they could have. And all of these people ran around trying to prove that they knew better than everybody else because that was the system uh, that they were brought up in. And we still have that today, a lot, where education should be a process of developing the mind. Really, it's just a process of filling the mind with knowledge that can then, in a very, very short space of time during exam season, this knowledge can then come out in a horrible tribal ordeal. Uh, and at the end of it, you have a trophy, which gives you status and importance. Uh, now, unfortunately, this trophy, whether you get a bronze, silver, or a gold, whether you get a first class degree, a second class degree, what percentage you got, you get, or what kind of grades they have, it's got nothing to do with how well you're going to be able to do the job that you want to do. It's got nothing to do with it. Uh, you could spend three years in the law library of your college and become the best law student, and you could be a terrible lawyer because practicing law has got nothing to do with studying law. And it's the same with almost every other profession. John, just, same with just sorry, everything. interruption. Um, what was the uh, incentive to create such a system for Babylonians? There was like uh, the, the ruling class or ruler wanted to have some kind of system uh, where they could make people more obe uh, obe uh, obedient. So there would, won't be a revolutions or something like that. What was the case? Well, yeah, people were already quite obedient. They just needed to maintain that. What, what, the, what happened there was that most people were illiterate. And literacy is such a weapon. It's so powerful. And if we live in a society where everybody's literate, we don't, we don't realize how powerful it is. But if, in a society where 15% of people can read and write and 85% can't, then you have a huge power imbalance. Now, what the king believed in those days, uh, first of all, he believed that, that society must believe I'm a god. They had gods for everything. And uh, the king was a god. And they, secondly, they believe that if society doesn't believe that I'm a god, everything's going to fall apart and it's going to descend into anarchy. And at the very least, I'm going to get my head chopped off. So the king and his priests were really, uh, he was a, an actor and his priests were stage managers. And the priest's job was to raise the status of the king, to create the mythology around the idea that this guy is a god. Uh, and... Um, and if you have a group of people who come along and say, nah, he's not a god, I remember him, I remember him, we're old family friends, he's an idiot, he's a schmuck, he's not a god, he's a guy in a dress, who cares, he's not a god, then uh, this is going to be a problem. Uh, and the king is going to have to kill people who do things like that. Uh, now, if you have a society where you're not allowed to say the king's not a god, otherwise you'll get your head chopped off, then that's a very, very repressive society. It's not a society like we have today. Uh, and so there were things that you maybe thought or maybe even knew that you couldn't say in public kind of Soviet or like North Korea, like a totalitarian uh, nation. But this wasn't so much about ideologies, this was about the foundation of the world. Uh, the king in that temple over there on the hill is a god. He has the power of all of the gods in heaven. And not just because he has armed guards with spears and, and swords who'll kill us if we disagree, but because we genuinely believe being illiterate uh, peasants who, who can't read and write and who don't know very much about the world, we genuinely believe that that guy in the temple on the hill is a god. And that's terrifying. And he has total power over us. And just with the force of his imagination and by clicking his fingers, he can cause the harvest to be good or he can cause famine. So we have to be really nice to him. And the schools were for scribes. The scribes are the people who could read and write. And hey, guess what? The scribes were also the priests. It was a very comfortable little mafia. Uh, so if your father was a scribe, you were going to be a scribe. And if you were a scribe, then you knew what your job was. Your job was an apparatchik for the Babylonian temple. Your job was to maintain the mythology that the king is a god and uh, to be a bureaucrat to help keep the irrigation pipes flowing and to help keep the grain distribution network going. 
uh, all of the people, all of the accountants, all of the people who did the forecasting for harvests, all of that logistical stuff was done by the scribes who were also the priests. So it was, um, it was, I mean, in America, they talk about a military industrial complex. This was a religious political complex uh, where it was run by the 15% of society who knew how to run anything bigger than a bath. Um, everybody else just kept their heads down and did the jobs that they were told to do. So, and uh, for example, just just switching uh, some like uh, five thousand years uh, up to these days, what subconsciously, I I think subconsciously, what we have kept from those days, what do you think? The idea that the teacher knows everything and the child knows nothing, and all the child has to do is work hard enough and memorize enough stuff, and the child will one day become as wonderful as the teacher. The idea that all children learn in exactly the same way, that the material is all equally suited to everybody's mind. Uh, the idea that the only decent way to learn is parrot fashion. And if you're the best one in the class at learning parrot fashion, then you're going to be the most successful adult and you're going to be the adult who's most worthy of praise and respect and esteem. Um, and the idea that we can shatter the world into different subjects and study each subject in isolation without ever putting them together. That's a big one. There are subjects that can and should be taught together because they work very, very well together. Like maths and music, for example, mm. or physics and music. These subjects work amazingly well together. Uh, <clears throat> history and law, economics and biology, beautiful combination, beautiful combination, because economics is just the study of a biological phenomenon. Um, and when you locate economics in the context of biology, uh, you have a different view of it from someone who just sits there and thinks, hey, money, money, let me find out about money. Uh, you see economics as a biological phenomenon. It's completely different. These are the kinds of things that the Babylonian mentality stops us from doing because it doesn't want us to be holistic. It wants to keep the world shattered and separate because then it's very, very difficult for us to take any initiative. So one of the characteristics of the Babylonian system is about keeping things as they are, keeping things static, which means no innovation, or at least no innovation that the king doesn't want. <laughs> 